turn the sound off here but during the class if you'll just kind of look at that screen and make sure it doesn't stop because last time I was just talking away talking away and it and it had gone off I'd lost connection but I just didn't lose me and and so I had to start the whole thing back over I got you you know what I mean yeah. all right they's gonna be they's gonna be cool <laughs> I'm trying to I'm, I still don't know what I'm gonna say yet I'm still trying to one class or two? I'm gonna do one but I'm gonna combine them because I still don't know exactly uh, how, how to put it over how to put the pieces to put the pieces yeah yeah gotcha. it'll come it'll come we'll just wing it you know, some of the greatest things is that because of someone winged it. Yeah. I, I use that wing cliche because tonight we're talking about angels. <laughs> it fits. I, did, I said I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> Double entendre. All right. Let's say our prayers. We got Juliet. We got uh, John. We got Gary We got Lisa Craig. Are we still going? Did it go? Ed, is that a beaver hat? Oh. Uh, Looks like it's some really no, good it's felt. Just, it's, 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 yeah. it's from Australia. Can y'all still see me? It is. It's an Australian hat. Been having it for years. It's a, it's a snowy river hat. Yeah, I traded. Uh, I traded a Zistol to make a to an Australian for it. So he's wearing my Stetson, and I'm wearing his snowy river hat. I think we're still going. All right, we'll say a prayer. Today we get to study Torah for the sake of heaven, for the sake of Israel and all Jerusalem. We would like to give the merit of our study and the merit of our Torah to Stephen King, Abraham Ben Moshe Gillah, Linda Flora, Carl Serial, Brandon Walsh, Raymond Rosentrader, Book Gibson, Paul Navaris, Garrett Matlitz, Jordan Matlitz, The Patients of Texas Oncology, Rita Wilson, H.L. and Betty Munkuski, Lola, daughter of Justin Lakeisha Neal, Berea Wanstaff, Elise Hagar, Nadine Freeman, Logan Willis, Billy Holt, Charles David, Rosa Honda, Christopher Baderka. Noel Cardoza, David Douglas, Vicki McLean, Savannah, daughter of Matthew and Misty Cast, Tom and Karen Maitland, Sandra Hayes, Carol Teekle, Larry Lambert, Julian Navarez, Blake Hahn, Lila Briscoe, Sam Peake, Yehuda High Ben Matilea, James London, David Jenkins, Jake Suarez, Bobby Williams Sr., Sally Talamantes, the Rogers family, Carol Gibson, Damian Washington, Carol Scott, Rabbi Richmond, Maurice Greenwood, Gracie Bell Linder, Stanley Hirsch, Malcolm Wilhelm, Amanda Elliott, Frank Pollard, Carol's family, Baby Denard, Michelle Magnus and Jenna Marie, Kimberly Brown, Debbie January, Kim Lively, Crespin Rodriguez, Sandra Hurth, Virgil Williams, Brad Mace, Jocelyn Olivia Nickerson, Jerry Matlitz, Dylan Teekle, Amber Merchant, Simka Ben Abraham and family, Celinda Sheffields, Louis Gutierrez and family, Aaron Price, Gail McWhorter, Francisco Odessi, Kathy Johns, John Michael Christopher Ramos, Jean Sonajak Coates, Nellie Warlick, Tahila Abuelo, Miranda Rosas, uh, Jim Barfield and family, Nami Batsimka, Terry King, Ronald Whitlow, Kathleen Graham Walsh, Brandon's family, Myla Rose, Monica Johnson, Ed and Dottie Garrison, Moshe Salavechek, Donna Marie, Farrar Sajid, Faye and Benson Ewing, Darlene Youts, Debbie Henson, Anita Jones. How's she doing, by the way? Uh, last time I talked to her, she was doing okay. Good. She's still, still wearing her monitor and all that stuff. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Jessica Ross, Brandon Welch. Daniel Garcia, Gideon, Salvador Gutierrez and family, Phoebe Bridges, Jacob and Simka, Mark Matledge, Emily Batova, Nadine Bot Miriam, Jackie Cup, 
Carla Manzanares, uh, Johanna Fay, Alton Tillman, Elvia Rosas, and David Cass. All right, Javi, if you would turn on my camera there. May, may, gotta, may have to pull it back a little bit and get it all set. Yeah, something. Ready? Hit it ready when you are. Ruler of the universe and master of all masters, Father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor. This is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. And may their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit enlighten our eyes and our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Today is our fifth uh, inner space class, I believe. Yeah. Today's our fifth one. And so, because we are fixing to get in, last time we stopped on page 25 at Berea, but... We have Isaiah's vision on page 27 and Ezekiel's vision through 28 and Ezekiel's vision on 29. And then on 30 is the Hyot, the angels of Yetzirah. Every bit of that is angelology. Every bit of it. All right. So over the last two weeks, Rabbi Bax has found a very it, it, he's found this book that contains many many ancient uh, manuscripts from a group of men that predate the Zohar this is around before the whole destruction of the second temple this is quite, quite a ways back this group was called the secret circle all right, and they talk about Metatron, and they talk about angels like there's nothing to it, you know. Not that it's nothing, but it's just like it's common. It's common language that it's not so secret, that it's not so this, it's not so that. All right, and I've been studying of this, studying this piece in Kings, and I've been studying through that piece with him, and. There are new developments in Torah. And if we think about it, we've always known it. We didn't know how to articulate it. And so for 2,000 years, as, that since the time, even the, the Sefer Yitzra was really their book. You know, that's the Bahir and the Sefer Yitzra, and they knew it like the back of their hand. Well, uh, as, as Kabbalah went, went through the ages, the, the really deep esoteric knowledge was, was so lofty that it really messed people up, you know? Because they, they, they just, it went against everything that they knew about reality, all right? Now, I remember, and many of you watching probably, probably remember the day, or at least, you might not remember the day, but you remember the feeling that you had the moment you realized the entire Jesus thing, Christianity thing was a lie. That you had to rethink everything you knew 
all right? It was, for, for me, I, I was just like, you gotta be kidding me, all right? And I know because I watched the Facebook that there's a lot of people on there that feel like the rug has been pulled out under them, they've been punched in the gut, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Guess what? I'm fixing to do it to you again. <laughs> so, but what you were doing was you were going to another level. And that was what was hard. It's, it's fear of heights is what you had. You were out of your comfort level. You thought you knew everything, so your ego got a left hook. All right, well, I'm fixing to, we're fixing to take you one more step up. Now, if you tell anybody any of this, they're not going to believe you. <laughs> Just like all the Christians didn't believe you when you told them it was a lie to begin with. But what I'm telling you this today in Torah, if you tell people in Torah, they're not going to believe you because they don't know either. This is one of the long lost secrets in Torah. But if you really step back, look at it from God's point of view, if you look at it from 4D, you're not looking at it from here, but up here, if you look down at it, you will see it's been there the whole time. All right? And we've got to talk about angels. We've got to talk about Adam, and we have to talk about people. What are we? All right. So I'm going to read in First Kings 18. And I'm going to go through this piece that I've been studying. And I'm going, I'm not going to go line by line uh, because it would take up the entire class. But I'm going to show you in the Peshat that the Peshat is not 3D. The Peshat is always 4D if you take it there. If you see it for what it is. So if you if, if, if you want to have time to go grab your Tanakh, go get it right now. And uh, thanks, Jordan. Here we go. Okay. And turn to 1 Kings 18. Verse 2, so Elijah went to appear to Ahab. What, is, what does that mean? Elijah went to appear to Ahab. We think in our 3D mind that he, just, he was on his camel and, you know, tick, 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 and he was riding down to Jerusalem or, where, or Samaria here where, where Ahab is. And he's going to get off his camel, go knock on the door, and speak with Ahab. That's where our 3D mind goes. No, it says he was going to appear to Ahab. We have a, so now we have something going on. <clears throat> so, verse 6. So, they divided the land between them and traversed it. So they're going to go look for Elijah because nobody can find Elijah. So Ahab went on one road in verse 6 and Ahab, uh, Obadiah went on the other road. Obadiah went on the road and behold, Elijah was in front of him. What, did he just pop out from behind a tree? He recognized him and fell on his face. Why in the world would Obadiah fall on his face? If you notice, every time in Torah, angels appear, they fall on their face. As if they saw God himself, right? Abraham knows. Jacob knows, Joseph knows, they all, Moses knows, they all know not to fall on their, they all know not to worship an angel. Do they not? These guys are masters in Torah. But yet, they fall on their face. 
Obadiah here is a ger. He's not a ger tzedek because he works for Ahab, who is a wicked king, whose wife is Jezebel. That's the Nakash, that's Sam and Lilith. Okay? This is, this is an Adamic story. <coughs> and Rashi goes on to say that he was from Edom. Obadiah's from Edom, from Esau, just like us. He was a gear. Working in the working in the evil house type of deal. But Rossi says, just as Esau was in the house of Sarah, I mean Isaac and Rebekah, and did evil, so Obadiah, that was in the house of wicked Ahab and Jezebel, did righteousness. You see, there's two halves, two halves of the same thing here going on. Alright? So let's so let's continue. So all of a sudden, behold. And he says, is that you, my Lord Elijah? Obadiah said, what is my sin that you had delivered me to the... He's asking Elijah about his sin. What does Elijah have to do with sin? Verse 10. As Hashem, your God, lives. That's a formula. Havaya Elohim Haya. 18. Haya. See what he's doing there? Right, left, center. Totality. Your rope brings it in. You sow. He, he knows there is, there's not a nation or a kingdom where my Lord is not sent to seek you out. Everybody's, and everybody's like, he's not here. And, and it, he, he had the kingdom and the nation swear they could not find him. He said, I'm telling you, nobody can find Elijah. And you say now, go tell Ahab, the Lord, that Elijah is here? Verse 12, read it very carefully. As soon as I go from you, a spirit of Hashem will carry you where I will not know. Has anybody yet figured out what Elijah is? For all of our lives, we have thought Elijah is a prophet, a man. He's not. He's an angel. All right? For your whole lives, you have thought that all these people in the Bible are people. They're not. Now, you're going to have to make a huge shift in consciousness here because I'm going to go through and show you how it works. That's going to beg the question of what are you? This, it, these men are the same men that put Yeshu Sar Hapanin in the prayer during Rosh Hashanah and the Shofar blow. And this is where all the Messianics tag on, that's Jesus. And we showed it was a formula, and, and we're going to get to how it works. But until you understand this concept, it's going to open up the next few pages in inner space. Now, Rob Bali says, plain as day, Elijah is a Malachi. He's an angel. Now, I, I will have to come tell Ahab and he will not be able to find you and he will kill me. But your servant has feared Hashem since his youth. Youth is Metatron. He's telling you what he is. Obadiah saying, and I'm Metatron. Ick. They're interfacing. This is the interface. And I'm fixing to show you how they interface. Okay? This is the secret of Gare. This is why Gare is so stinking important. He has, he has not been told, my Lord, what I did to Jezebel. She killed the prophets of Hashem. I hid a hundred of them. Obadiah is pleading his case. 
50 of them in this cave, uh, sustain them with food and water. Now you say, go tell your Lord, Elijah is here. He will kill me. Elijah said, Hashem, master of legions, before whom I stood lives. Elijah is telling him, dude, I stand before Hashem, master of legions. A man don't do that. You see? I swear, today I will appear to him. Poof. You see? Not I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over to Ahab's house and, and I will reveal myself. No. Today I'm gonna appear to him. Alright? Ahab, now look at verse 16, and I'm gonna show you the Gare formula. Ahab went, I mean Obadiah went toward Ahab and told him, so Ahab went toward Elijah. That doesn't make any sense. If Ed, if I go toward you and you come toward me, it should say Mike went toward Ed and then Ed went toward Mike. Right? That's not what it says. It says Mike went toward Ed and Ed went toward Javi. You see, the gear this interface, this Noga, was what Elijah was appearing through. It only happened when Obadiah was around. And then as it goes, as it interfaces and connects with Obadiah, because he says, hey, I, I've been here since a youth. I am, I am a Metatron. I am a Karuv too. Then, it's this interface that is speaking. This side's Obadiah. Standing right behind Obadiah is Elijah. There's one thing. What's Ahab seeing? He's seeing Elijah. Who is Elijah? That's the sand. He's sand off on. He's the edge of God. The, an edge is called a karuv. An angel is a karuv. Every one of these karus, every one of these angels that we're talking about, seraphim, chayot, oraphim, those are the edges of that world. Okay? Once they hit this world, you can't look back that way. You have to look the same way it's looking. You think your soul is a holy spark. There's nothing here but karuv, edges, lips. You have to, your, your, your flesh body and, and all that is concealing an angel, your, your actual karuv. Now, the Talmud says when you are born, an angel comes and touches your lips, right, Ed, and says forget. Now, Ed, why would it touch your lips? Why wouldn't it touch your brain? See the kasha? That doesn't make a bit of sense. What are lips? Karuv. You see, angels are called, and yet Sarah are called speaking spirits, messengers. People are the only speaking spirit here. Why is Lash and Hora so bad? Because you're destroying angels. If I speak against Javi, am I destroying Javi or his or he or his angel? The hob, the real hobby. See why Lash? Now we know it's been there the whole time. Abraham and Sarah left Haran with the souls they had made. What souls? Oh, the, it was angels. Oh, you see, if you spill seed, you create demons. 
bad angels. If you don't spill seed, you create good angels. Well, what if that's a child? It's still an angel. There is nothing here but caroving. There is no people. This is what they knew. The three angels show up and talk to Abraham. No big deal. Hey guys. So Abraham and he's like, hey, let's make him something to eat. So there's this huge kasha. Well, angels don't eat food. Well, what do you mean Abraham's eating food? You see? So Abraham, so the next year or, or, or whatever, the, well, the same year, let's just say, the angels show up to Lot. Lot is Gematria 45, Adam. No big deal. He invites the angels in like they're regular people. Why? He's Karuv. He, that's the edge of God. That's the presence of the face, of the interface. So Abraham shows up and Gabriel show up. Well, the Torah just says, the Torah says two angels show up to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then, it, and then the Zohar said, and Gabriel destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But, it, but Gabriel couldn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until Abraham left. Abraham's Hesed. So two angels showed up. One of them is Abraham. From God's eye, it's every, there's nothing here but God. Everything is an extension of Him. A lip, an edge, a carew, a going through, 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 through. You see. What are some more examples? Jacob. Jacob has a dream on the ladder and the angels were ascending and descending those were his that's him the soda the matter it was Jacob going up but it says angels were ascending and descending there's a huge kasha uh, God, God, God says it wasn't a messenger, it wasn't an angel, it wasn't a seraph, it was I who delivered them out of Egypt. Right? Well, we know it was the angel of death, we know it was Moses, we, we, you know, we, we know at the, at the, at the sea, the, the, the cloud and the fire was Abraham and Isaac. But he says, no, I did it. Those were my lips, those were my caroving. So, I'll, I'll look in the Talmud here. The biggest piece in the Talmud here is angels. And it lists a bunch of them. Assurus. Remember the story of Purim and Assurus? And, and Esther created an angel to sleep with the evil king? You see? And 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 then a different king comes in. They're, it's all angelic. They're all it's all interfacing. Alright? The Babylonian exile. The binding of Isaac. Angels. Creation, angels, demons, angels, destructions of the world is angels, evil inclination is angels, the exodus is angels, the famine revealed by the angels, the golden calf and the angels, Haman and the decree, angels, uh, Jacob's dream, angels, Joseph was taught by the 70 languages by Gabriel, uh, uh, Gabriel in Egypt, angels, he's interfacing, he learned 70 languages in one night, why? He was the 70 languages in one night. Manasseh, Messiah, Micah, Moses, 
Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Ishmael, Saul, the temple, the ten martyrs, the Torah acceptance in the wilderness, the provisions, they were fed and, and the angels were there and the angels guided them through. The angels guided them, guided them out of Egypt. They didn't think nothing of it. Because they were at a level they could interface with. All right? What's the huge argument in Christianity, especially back to the Council of Nicaea? Is he man or is he God? Is he angelic? You see? He's as much man as me, and he's as much angel as me. Now you've got to take a conscious shift. Because I have to make a conscious shift. That there's no human no anymore. When God, when God judges the world, he judges the Moloch, the angel that's over that nation. And the whole nation falls. Because that Moloch is connected to every other one. Interface between interface between interface and own and own and own. Okay? If you take Jesus' saying, I am the way, the truth, and life, what is I am? yud heh vav -Hey. yud heh vav -Hey is the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Go through him. Just keep going. <laughs> He's right. Any Moloch is the interface between Ian Soph and you. Whether it's an Orphim, a Hyot, a Seraphim, a Met Metatron, Michael. If Michael shows up today, you will swear on the Tanakh it's God himself. Because he brings everything God has with him. You will fall on your face and, and you will swear I saw God. Why? Because you did. You see, that's why they were doing that. That's why you don't you don't worship an angel. You don't separate that out from God. It's a karuv. It's it's curved light. It's the interface. They go in the temple. The two karuv are on the ark, and they they God speaks to the kohen gadol through the karuvim. You go into Solomon's temple. He put all the big karuv in there. You've seen the pictures of Solomon's temple that, that's described with all the karuvim in there. He knew. Solomon goes all over the world get, getting every tree, every herb, every everything from all over the tree and brings it back to Israel. How does he do that? He's a karuv. What does... What does God tell Hiram, Hiram, you mighty Karuv. We studied it. Because of you, I decreed death on Adam. What? Og. Og is the is the uh, the, the the basically the grandson of Uzzah and Azazel, the fallen angels. The Karuv that came down one level that that started the next lip that, and then he's attached to the ark. Well, the ark ain't a boat. The ark is Malchut. Noah is the Karuv because he's the grandson of Enoch who's Metatron who is a Karuv. Only a Karuv can produce a Karuv. Right? So if you spill your seed, you're making Karuv. And if you're making Karuv spilling seed, that means you are a Karuv. You've just put on this garment here and you think you're something else. But you're not. If you, if you realize God. Alright? Look a little more. Destruction of the first temple. Destruction of the second temple. Moses. The anger of God. Uh, the offerings, mating behavior, Noah's Ark, 
Solomon, Solomon's throne. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Angel, 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 angel. Karuv. All right? Now, whether, whether we get into inner space tonight or not, it doesn't matter. This is, this is what we got to get. Because only, only through interfacing with the Holy One. This is His face. You know, we talked talk last week. You have to seek God's face. And I read all of the things. Moses wanted to see God's face, his kavod, show me your glory. Okay? The word glory is kavod. Kavod is karuv. It's angel. It's interfacing. All right? This is, this is the thing. Turn to my face and I'll return to you. Seek my face and, you know, all the things I went through last week. Okay? As we learned here in Obadiah, this is this is why the gear is so important. This is y'all want to know why they're fighting gear so hard? This is why. This is why. There has to be an interface that God can touch the Klepa and destroy it. He ain't touching it. He ain't getting his fingers dirty. He'll send this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge until that presence can go through the medium, the membrane that it can't penetrate and get in. What did God set outside the Garden of Eden? The two karuv with the flaming swords. Rob Valley says, this is ger. This is the origin of ger. What did Noah put out? What? Why was Og outside the ark? That Noga was hermetically sealing the ark. We learn that the animals, that all the animals are, the, in Parsha Noah, were angels. They were angels. He's not putting giraffes on there and, and, uh, wildebeest and crocodiles and everything. No, it's the angels that produce... It's, it's, that's all it is. It's all, Metatron's running the system. Metatron is a Moloch. Why do you put a mezuzah on your door? Because it has a shin on it. The shin stands for Shaddai. Or the Shmi. Right? And so angels guard your door. When you go in, the angel is on your right side, and when you go out, the angel is on your left side and goes with you. If it wasn't true, you wouldn't put it on there. They wouldn't do it. You see, we put mezuzahs on our house so, so evil demons don't get in the house. Well, Because they want to, because because you're a Karuv, they want to kill the Karuv that's doing all the activation. You see, it's it's been there the whole time. We've just never saw it, ever. The the kavod, the glory of God, is only the activation of Noga which is the activation of Gare. This is how the angels move. Nothing happens on this earth without an angel as a messenger. Right? God's, God tells them what to do, they do it. Well, why, do, why does God have to have stimulation from below? From a man? No, because that's the Karuv signal coming back. Angels are communicating with angels as above, so below. It's always been there. It's Orphim within Orphim. This, this rabbi says that it's like the colors on the head of a peacock's tail. This is the this is the this is the Noga, this is the Kavod, this is what it looks like. This is the angels. You know, it's 
it, it's, it's, the, it's the black and the purple and the pink and the green. and Depending on how you look at it in the light, He says the Karuv is a Haya. What was Eve's name before it was Hava? Haya. She's a Karuv, the car of light. And he said, and Adam was created from this source in the Sefer Yitzra. From a Katriel on his the on the is the crown a katriel is the top angel um, is the keter of metatron the top sphero on the crown of the havaya this is the point where he said let us make man in our image and our likeness now if god is making man adam which we take that scripture to mean man man right if he's making Adam in his image and in his likeness, and the image and likeness that he's making him in is a Catriel, Metatron, is angel is is Adam a man or is he a Karuf? He's the light of Ma. He's a Havaya. He's a Karuvim. So if Haya is a Karuv and Adam is a Karuv, what do you think their kids are? <laughs> Don Donkeys. Yeah. Now, that brings up a great point. The donkey was speaking to the angel in the middle of the road with Billam on the back. Right? You know, but Billum couldn't see it because that's the Klepa. <clears throat> Ezekiel saw the throne the, of glory, the Kavod, the place where Adam was created. And I saw Adam sitting on the throne. This is where we're headed in inner space. A Karuv, this Karuv is between Atsilut. And Berea, the world of the infinite, or the world of the will, or the thought of God, wills the Adam Kadmon, thought of God, versus the creation part. Now, Berea, Yetzira, Asiya. We've studied those, that's Bia. We've studied those three worlds. The angels have six wings, right? The two, top two are covering Berea. The middle two are covering Yitzira, and the bottom two are covering Asiya. So, as you go down, four wings. As you go down, two wings. That's why I said tonight we're going to wing it. All right? What Ezekiel is seeing is he's in Yitzira. Where he has interfaced and he's a Malachim as well. He's, he's a Karuv. He's looking down and he's seeing Orophim. He's not seeing people anymore. He's looking where he's at and he's seeing Hayot. And he's looking up and he's seeing Seraphim. And, and it's all connected. It's a wheel within a wheel within a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. Within a wheel. See? Isaiah has the same type of deal. Now, what happened, what's so funny is when Daniel prophesies, Daniel's prophesying from Asiya, from the lowest level, and he's looking all the way through the mirrors and he sees the white man with a beard sitting on a throne. The Ancient of Days, a recon peen, the Malchut of Keter. Malchut is the throne. So, there is an aspect. How does Christianity steal that? Santa Claus. Plain as day. 
You see, he's the judge. Have, have, have you been naughty or nice? You see, you see, the 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 interface and what they got. You know, they got baby Jesus. They got all the angels up there, silent night, holy night. What they have done is is they would be fine if they went all the way through and interfaced. But they don't. They have an intermediary. They stop it right there. In Jesus' name. If they just took that out and went pushed all the way through and, and made it me and God are one, he and his name are one, they would be all right. They could get by. They don't. They wouldn't know a dang bit of Torah, but at least they could interface. All right, but but because they stop right there, they're done. You don't go to your Moloch. You go through your Moloch. He didn't go to Obadiah. He went through Obadiah. In the story, see. Yeah, but when the chief marketing officer is the emperor of the Roman Empire, that's pretty, pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why in Obadiah, uh, I might even have it marked here. Well, it's the last verse in Obadiah, and I think Obadiah is only one chapter. Where where Obadiah is the one that prophesies against Edom. Why? He's from it. He's the connecting lip to it. If you're gonna if you're gonna kill a snake, if you're gonna get rid of a snake bite, you gotta have snake venom. From it kills it. Alright? The the Karuv, it's a Karuv thing. Alright? Now. That makes sense? The unique Karuv, this is coming out of this, this manuscript that we've unearthed. The unique Karuv is the only one in the shape of human. The one Adam was formed. Who do you think the unique Karuv is? Metatron. Who is not human. <laughs> you see... This is a sheer coma. A sheer coma is a divine measurement of the body of God. He's measured by a sheer coma. All right? This Karuv is identified by the aspect of the Tetragrammaton. The unique one, Metatron, is known by yud heh vav -Hey. Hashem. Every time you see the word Hashem, you can go Metatron. You can put you can put Metatron right there. You can put Adam right there. Doesn't matter. That's just one karuv. That's just one step of the formula that's connected to the thing that made the formula. That's the formula name. That's why you can't say Yahweh. You can't. That's why you can't pronounce yud heh vav -Hey because it's not a name, it's a formula. It's a, it's a system of how it works. It's math. It's holography. The crown of Metatron is a catriel or octriel. This is Adam Tzivaot. Adonai Tzivaot. I don't, uh, Tziva Oat is like uh, Netzach and Hod or the Tziva Oats. Okay? That's where that name's coming from. When when, when the Havaya becomes Tziva Oat, that's prophecy. This is what was visible to the prophets. That Kuruv, that lip, that edge. This is, we, and we've talked about this before, Rabbi Ishmael in the Talmud, when, when he goes in 
on Yom Kippur and he sees uh, a Katriel and and then it said and and Havaya said bless me well I thought he saw Katriel but now Hashem says bless me Katriel was the interface that Havaya was using and, and he's the lip he's the mouthpiece and he's speaking and as he's speaking Akatriel speaks bless me could have swore him down he was talking to God because he was you know and he said and I, I don't remember exactly I, I posted it before but it's like it's like good compassionate merciful he was he was he was stimulating back because he's a caroved back. He caroved back that interface. If they're having union, if you're going to have union with the Holy One and he's caroving, you're going to have to carove back. You're going to have to literally get rid of yourself and become an angel. Spread your wings in your meditation and get there. And now you're interfacing on a whole nother level. A karuv is fluid, membranes, colors, shapes, audio, visual, five dimensions, four dimensions, holographic. You're never on the backside of God because you're now his interface. Listen to this. <laughs> when this is what these men said 2300 years ago. These were the top guys. There wasn't there's nobody higher. Pray that when your prayer is accepted by the power of the unique one who's made by fire from fire and the ten sphere rope and the karuv is one of them which is Malchut which is also Keter because up there it's the crown sitting on the head everything is unified without exception what are they saying? When you pray, you use, you become an angel. Let's just call it an angel. Or Karuv is correct. You become this Karuv that uses the power of Metatron as if you were Metatron. You're not praying to Metatron. You're praying from him. And he's the high priest in the temple of God. He's the teacher of Torah. Who teaches Torah in the high temple? Talmud says God does. Teaches all the kids. Remember that piece? And this is, oh, that's just Metatron in the Talmud. So now you're praying as if Metatron's praying, but more so you're praying as if you are praying. Good, hey, Bob, hey, yourself. Because you're, it's one, he and his name are one. What now makes you different than God? You're not God, but you're interfaced. This is what happened to Rabbi uh, Benabuya in the Pardes. He goes in the Pardes, and Rabbi Akiva told him, Whatever you do, don't say you're this and he's that. Don't say water, water. Don't say there's a separation. Because when you do, he became a heretic. This is why they don't want you to learn Kabbalah. Because this is powerful. So, when you go in, you and God are, are doing it. It's as if he's doing it. You are just his karuv. You are just his extension. This is inner face. This is the inner space that you're trying to get to. Secret of that book. They can't go there because I don't want to say they don't know, but they don't know. 
Because nobody knows this. All right? Everything is united without exception. That the Creator provides the Shefa to the unique Karuv from the highest to all of Israel to the world. This is called Yeshua. Salvation. What do the Christians do? Oh, that's Jesus. No, it's a verb. It's not a <laughs> noun. This is the secret to salvation of the soul in this reality. Jesus was right. If you use yud hey vav hey and you go through me and you and Karuv or whatever, if you go all the way through it, you're going to get it. But, but the problem is they see Yeshua in there and they go, oh, that's a noun. That's a person. No, it ain't. It's a verb. It's what? It's the effect. It's salvation that happens, which is what everybody wants. Because now you're with God. You know? When they saw Elijah, they saw God. They Obadiah bowed on his face. And then when Ahab saw Obadiah, he saw Elijah. You see? It's not the faces. It's not even the facets. It's the phases. Okay? So anytime you see face of God, think of the phases of God. How it how how you go through to God. You just press you, you just press forward, 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 forward. When you go back through and you start reading the Parshas, and the angel of the Lord is talking with Jacob, and the angel of the Lord is talking with Israel. Well, well, you know, well, basically, if, if you're reading like Jacob in the latter, there's times in the in, in, in the portion it calls him Jacob, and there's times it says Israel. When he's in 4D, his name's Israel. When he's talking to him here, it's it's Jacob. That's why the name keeps changing. Does God not know he changed his name? When the angel of the Lord's talking to him, when the lesser Metatron's talking, or when the greater Metatron's talking, is Israel. Because now Jacob had become the lesser Metatron. He interfaced. This is why in Jacob's dream, the angels are going up first, then down, because it's Jacob going up the ladder. You see, this is how it works. The patriarchs, this is the secret of all secrets of all Torah, right here. Now you can understand why Shem is at Noah and at Solomon. Why Og is at Noah and Moses. Why Job is at the circumcision of Abraham and Moses and, and uh, the crossing of the sea and Pharaoh. Alright? Now, when Russell and Teresa were over in Israel, they went to Jethro's tomb. And just so happened, the high priest of the Druze was there. Now, the Druze do not teach anybody their religion. Nobody. They don't teach them any secrets. You have to be born a Druze. You can't convert to be a Druze. The Druze are the descendants of Jethro. Okay? There's no conversion. He's gayer. But you've got to be born one. Here's what he told him. He said, for some reason, he starts telling Russell the sode of the matter of Jethro. This has never been told in the history of Torah. In the, since Jethro to an outside Druze. He says, Jethro was the mate of Moshe Rabbeinu. Jethro is the staff of Moses. 
it all makes perfect sense now. He was the interface he dealt with with Pharaoh, just like Obadiah, the Gare. Follow me? Mate, Memtet, hey, Metatron. That's the staff of Moshe. You can go back now and read the Torah and look at it from Torah A, from God's point of view. And now you have to ask yourself, who are you, what are you? Five minutes. All right. And so, we, this, this is amazing. All right. Now, this is what he says in, in this piece. These, the, this is called the, the secret circle. He says, this is called the way of the Karuv. Derek Karuv. You've heard the term Derek Hashem, the path of Hashem. This work is called Derek Karuv. They did it like it was no big deal. This is what you do. This is how you do it. This is the secret of the throne of glory. This is the secret of the prophets. This is the secret of everybody in this book. That's why the sowed changes everything. That's why when now when, when we read, I started out, we read that Peshat story. Now, now it's a whole nother level because you see, you see the 4D going on in it. Never before has anybody done that. Just like we did with Hiram, just like we did with Solomon, with Bithia. Bithia. Oh, Bithia is a Shekhinah. Well, what do you mean she's a Shekhinah? Bithia was one of Pharaoh's daughters that pulled Moshe from the Nile, married Solomon. I'm sorry, that's like 1,200 years of difference. She's a, it's, they're angels, man. <laughs> this, this <laughs> is what Gilgal is. Gilgal is not soul transmigration. It's the phases of Hashem. You are uniquely you. That's why when you do tshuva, it affects your whole family line. Because they're just phases of you back to the Ian Sof. They can hate you all they want. You are their Yeshua, their salvation. You see, no class next week, class a week after. Torah is amazing. Sages are amazing. And we'll see you first week of December. And we'll finish, pick it up right here on page 25. We'll go through Ezekiel's vision, Isaiah's vision, and you'll see it a total different way. Brookeshim. Brookeshim.